Yeah. Yeah, we're doing this. Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Phoenix, and welcome once again, we haven't done this in a while, to the Consumer's Guide to Video Games. The Last of Us Part 2, 2020, Neil Druckmann and Naughty Dog. The Last of Us Part 2 is a stealth action survival horror game. Taking place a number of years after the first game, Ellie is now an adult and Joel is growing old and both are living a relatively quiet and peaceful life. However, a squad from a faction known as the Washington Liberation Front, the Wolves for short, led by a woman named Abby, ambushes Joel and his brother Tommy while the two are patrolling. Abby, in front of Ellie, brutally kills Joel. The player, taking control of both Ellie and Abby, must now traverse the zombie apocalypse and experience as Ellie and Abby's quests for vengeance irrevocably change each other's lives. This game has been incredibly divisive, polarizing, and controversial. People have either derided this game or vehemently defended it. I'm not going to state my overall opinion until the end of the review. You can say I'm burying the lead a bit there, but fuck you. It's my review. I am first going to outline my thoughts on the gameplay, the presentation, and the narrative elements. I just want to get this all out of my mind and off my chest before I make a definitive judgment. Okay? Okay. Moving on. As a game, does The Last of Us Part Two function? The answer is yes. I very much enjoyed playing the game. The combat and stealth sequences in this game are just as good as they were in The Last of Us 1. The characters move fluidly, the enemies are intelligent, and the gameplay is challenging. You have to think, you have to vary your strategies, and you have to play smart in order to get through each encounter unscathed. I played this game on hard, like I did the first game, and let me tell you, it kicked my ass at points. I had to really think creatively to get through some of these levels. You are given a wide variety of upgrades and weapons to combat your enemies. Resources are scarce, and each bullet and bomb slash grenade count. It is a robust and rewarding experience. Presentation-wise, does The Last of Us Part Two measure up? I say it absolutely does. The shot composition and editing in this game, in the cutscenes at least, is absolutely stunning. The framing and the lighting is very stark yet serene. It is a feast for the senses, examining all the little details in each shot. The animation and design of this world are unbelievable. The worlds are so detailed and layered and have so many interesting little tidbits about them. I had the same reaction to playing The Last of Us 1, and this game looks just as good, if not better. The character models are so frighteningly realistic, and the voice actors, who also did the mocap for the game, bring these characters to life so elegantly. Yeah, sure, character models and animations could get a little janky or silly looking at points, but in the overall, it was excellent. Troy Baker gives an absolutely riveting performance as Joel, and pretty much any scene with fucking old man Joel trying to make amends with Ellie and be a dad to her is just absolutely tender and heartbreaking. Ashley Johnson is excellent as Ellie. She was in the first game, she is in this game especially. And despite what I'm going to talk about very soon, Laura Bailey, she's really good as Abby. Writing and story-wise, does The Last of Us Part Two live up to the amazing story of the first game? Sorry. This is why the game is so controversial. The story, to me, it's kind of a mess. Fundamentally, 
I do not hate the ideas or the direction that Neil wanted to go with this game. I just don't very much care for how he and Naughty Dog executed it. I like the idea of Joel dying and Ellie going on a bloodlust fueled quest for revenge. The idea of the daughter of a firefly coming back to kill Joel is a nice idea. This was not the way to do it. I think why the execution of these ideas bugs me so much is because of how forced and absolutely tone deaf the character arc of Abby is and the way they try to resolve this story. At the start, Abby is presented as this absolutely heartless bitch who had it in for Joel. He killed her dad, she wants to give him the receipt, and she did by bashing Joel's head in with a fucking golf club. She has a clear motivation, and she is presented as a proper antagonist. Dare I say it, I would call her a villain, because she's absolutely unlikable, and the extremes she went to were horrifying. However, it all begins to fall apart when you have to play as her. When you play as Abby, Druckmann desperately tries to make you like her and make you think she is a decent enough person whose judgment is clouded. That's, that's his intention, but I'm sorry, I don't give a shit. Why? 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 Should I care about this ladyboy running around fighting a cult that we haven't been told enough about to even care for. Like, why should I be invested? Am I supposed to be riveted by Neil Druck? I, I mean, Owen. Owen. When her and Owen has this big sexual escapade. It's, it's all just really dull and unneeded and doesn't feel interesting, like at all. And then, when Ellie and Abby finally have their giant showdown, Abby lets her live because the kid was sad? Neat, I guess. Cool. Then, when Ellie and Abby have a second showdown, because A, this game doesn't know when to fucking end, and B, we have to introduce more villains that barely get any development, um, Ellie lets Abby live because Joel and Ellie made up at one point. And then Ellie is all alone because she was consumed by vengeance. Good job. Like, fuck. All of these ideas, on their own, could have worked. Like I said before. But Jesus Christ. I was so exhausted and bored with Abby and all that fucking nonsense that it drained all my interest in the story. Just, I really understand how people are getting so butthurt about this game. I really do now. Because it really is a sloppily structured and poorly thought out sequel. Like, especially when you compare it to how concise, tight, and sound the themes and character arcs were in the previous game. Just fuck me. Fuck. So yeah, what do I think of this game? It's a bit of a disappointment, to say the least. The gameplay's great, the presentation's amazing, but the story is sloppy and could have done with some really heavy refinement and retooling. If you're a fan of The Last of Us, I'll maybe play it, just to see what all this hoopla is about. But be prepared to just not enjoy yourself. Christ. <sighs> I'm feeling a 5 out of 10 on this. Yeah. Stefan! Take it away. Yo, 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 it's your boy Stefan, 
And if you made it to this part of the video, you know you just watched another fly-ass review by my man Phoenix. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Pass these videos around. Also, make sure to follow this channel on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, all that stuff. Links to those will be in the description. And man, if you like what's going on here, if you want Phoenix to keep doing his thing, man, you gotta donate to our Patreon and subscribe star pages. That way, you can get all sorts of extra content that's just straight up baller. Yo, this is your boy Stefan, signing out. Peace!